Hey everybody, this is Steven from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. As you can see, we have a bit of a new background. Um, things have uh, changed and the studio that I was recording in is no longer available. So uh, this is just temporary. Uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit more organized next week. Uh, so there's, like I said, there's been some changes, but they're good changes, I think. Um, but that shouldn't hopefully ref uh, affect the reviews. Uh, we're still doing them. And uh, so we're, uh, it's not too bad of a week. Uh, uh, you know, a decent stack. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, lots of returning ones. Uh, not that many number ones this week. Uh, so uh, uh, first up, we have uh, Layla Star number one, written by Ram V, uh, with artwork by uh, Philippe uh, uh, and Andrade. Um, this is really an interesting book. Uh, so basically, uh, it has to do with, uh, like Shiva, the God of death. And, uh, so basically she's been fired. <laughs> and so, uh, because there's a new, uh, baby that's being born, uh, that will, uh, ba basically everybody will become immortal. Uh, so obviously she's not real happy about this. I mean, you know, your death, your job, you're killing people. And then all of a sudden <laughs> you're fired. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what she does is she, she, uh, decides to, uh, basically, you know, like, well, if you're firing me, I'm going to go kill this kid. So she goes down to earth, tries to, you know, she inhabits a, a girl who, uh, uh, committed suicide and uh then she ultimately she tries and fails on this first one uh but there's a lot more to it i mean that's the basic structure of it but there's a lot more going on uh ram v obviously you know he's been doing a lot of stuff at dc he's doing the current Catwoman and swamp thing uh but this is uh this is a really interesting book um i i think what's interesting is the flavor of the story you know using uh a lot of uh like uh indian mythology and stuff like that um uh but what what's interesting is is how he's using that but telling it a really you know really straightforward simple story but with, you know, some, some, just some nice twists and turns. I mean, on the surface, the, this, this, you know, the basic structure of the plot is, is pretty simple. Uh, but there's a lot of little nuances, uh, that, that he really puts in the script that really is, is what makes it. I really, uh, Andre's, uh, artwork is just absolutely stunning here. This is a really gorgeous looking book. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely just amazing. And, uh, you know, in the, in the color work, it really just adds to his, um, <clears throat> his line work. And it's it just, uh, you know, it, it really just like, I mean, you open up the book and you're just like, wow. And then you read the story and then you find out how well that, you know, the artwork fits that story. And, and that just, you know, like I said, it just really, it's, it's really impressive. I mean, it, I haven't read a debut issue, uh, like that, this in quite a while. Um, it, it's, it's got so many things going for it. And by the time you get to the end of the first issue, you're like, I have to wait a whole month. Uh, you know, so, uh, th it's really good. I highly recommend that. Um, next up we have, uh, Jonah and the Unpassable Monsters, number two, uh, written by Chris Samney, uh, and Laura Samney with artwork by Chris Samney. The last amnesia there. Uh, I really enjoyed this first issue. I really enjoyed the first issue of this. And the second issue uh, does a really great job. Uh, it, basically, Jonah's sister is out looking for him because he's disappeared. And so she's kind of out in the world. At, you know, there's monsters and all sorts of stuff. Now, she does, um, you know, it's, it's not really a spoiler. She does find him, but it's not, you know, it's not like, oh, hey, where have you been? Oh, I miss you so much. No, it's nothing like that. It's like, um, he, in a way, he's kind of turned savage, not in a bad way. I mean, he just, like, I, he almost, he doesn't recognize her, and it, it's just really interesting. Um, I like, uh, you know, once again, the, you know, there's a lot of times in the script where there's actually, there's actually no dialogue, you know, it's silent, but there's, you know, that's where, um, not only the story, but obviously Sam Nee's artwork really comes into play in this book is in a lot of respects, the, the, the world, the, you know, kind of the jungle and the monsters and stuff there, you know, but the actual world 
is a character unto itself. And that's what makes it really fascinating is, is, you know, that, that there's, there's so you, you can see the, the depth of everything, you know, and that's where, you know, I mean, obviously he's writing it and, and drawing it, but that's, you know, kind of like what makes the comic so great is that it's that marriage of comic and, you know, the, the story and the artwork that really makes a wonderful comic. I mean, I'm a huge Sam Nee fan and I really am enjoying, um, you know, this book, it's a really great all ages book, but you know, not, I, you know, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily made for kids, but kids can actually enjoy it. And it's just, it's really a wonderful book. Um, I, I'm really enjoying it. I, I still highly recommend this book. Uh, next up, we have Alien Number 2, um, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, uh, with artwork by Salvador La Roca. Um, you know, I like the first issue. Uh, you know, it was, it was good, you know. Um, the second issue is good, but, you know, ultimately kind of the problem it's kind of exactly what you think it's going to be. Um, you know, I mean, there's the father and, you know, his, his estranged son and, you know, and he's been kind of somewhat kicked out of the military. And, and now we find out that his son has gone to the space station, apparently causing problems. And, you know, they like, well, you know, we're going to, you know, you have to do this mission because otherwise we're going to, you know, do bad things to you. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, and then there, of course, there's a girl, uh, you know, everybody's dead except for the girl. And then there's the aliens and it, it just, you know, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's, but the problem is it's not really anything new. I mean that admittedly, you know, I'll be the first to admit a lot of the dark horse, you know, miniseries had the same problem. You know, when the script is decent, you know, it's it, but but it's exactly what you think it's going to be. There was nothing that really surprised me. Nothing that's like what makes this di a different story than, you know, another alien story. You know, it just it it feels, you know, it's it's a very been there, done that. I will say the one really good thing that this book has got going for it is the artwork uh, by LaRocca that is really, really gorgeous. I mean, it's a great looking book, but in the end, you know, it, it's, if, if you, if you're okay with just an average alien story, then this is fine. But if you're looking, if you're hoping that it's something different, I, at this point, it's not, you know, it's not bad. It's just that it's not really anything special. Uh, next up, we have Nightwing number 79, uh, written by Tom Taylor with artwork by uh, Bruno Redondo. Um, I really, really liked the first issue of this. And I, I not only have to say that not only is the second issue is good, I think it might even be better than the first issue. And that's not a bad thing. It's it's the fact that Taylor is, is just the story is so interesting. And I think what makes it really interesting is that he's really, you know, dealing with the character of Dick Grayson, which is really, I mean, you know, that that's a difference between like an, I'd say an average superhero book and a really good, you know, but way above average uh, superhero book is it's about the characters. I mean, you need to really care. And I think not only that, but, you know, with with um the way he's using Barbara in the story and everything. It's just, it's really solid. And I think, you know, the fact that he has inherited the, you know, the, the millions, you know, the, 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 the millions from Alfred, um, you know, it, 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 it really adds like to his, you know, the character of, of Dick and, it's just, it's really, a, you know, it's just really a damn good story. And I mean, it's, it's interesting because of the character. I mean, yes, there's action sequences and stuff, but there's so much more that Taylor is doing with this uh, story that's just, you know, it's really amazing. And, you know, ultimately you can have a good story, but you really got to have an artist that can bring it to life. And, uh, Redondo is really doing that here. They worked together on, uh, the, uh, the previous suicide squad before, um, um, uh, 
uh, the recent ones. Um, and they did a bang up job and, and Redondo is just really bringing the A game here. Not, you know, because there's a lot of parts of the story that is just dialogue and yet he makes it so interesting and just, you know, you're just like riveted visually and it's just two people talking and that is not an easy thing to do. And that is what really is making this book good is it's just, it's really solid. I mean, it's just good. It's a good read. And not only do you enjoy it while you're reading it, you're like, I want more, you know, and, and that's that's a good sign of a really good book is that you're actually, wow, I'm excited for the next issue to see what they do with it. So uh, another really highly recommended uh, book uh, this week. Uh, next up, we have Ultra Mega number two, uh, written and drawn by James Heron. Um, I'll be honest, I, I like the first issue, but I think at this point, you know, there's so many, you know, you know, not that there's a ton, but there's been quite a few, you know, kaiju based uh, comics. And the first issue was nice. You know, it set it up and then there was a giant battle. And, you know, it's 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 the story was decent. The art's really good, but it didn't really, uh, you know, it, it didn't really necessarily like, wow, this is this is really different. I mean, you know, it it it, it didn't ultimately feel like it set itself apart too much but the second issue really does because the second issue actually doesn't you know really have kaiju battles you have um you know the outside world where you know it's the post-apocalyptic you know everything's destroyed and and people are trying to fend for themselves and you know there's fractions there's kind of like the the ultra mega you know people that you know kind of follow that and then there's like the people who are like you know, whoa, Kaju's, you know, like, you know, it's kind of good versus evil sort of thing. Um, but you have this kid who's, who's basically, you know, fighting the, you know, the one good kid and the bad, you know, fighting the bad gang. And it's just, it's really interesting. And I was really quite honestly blown away with what he did in this second issue, because it's, it's more than just, kaijus and you know ultraman and you know stuff like that you know it's it's so much more and there was so much depth to the story that it just you know it, it really just was impressive i really was shocked because i just thought oh well you know he's gonna do more of this in the next issue but there's there's obviously a lot more to it than that and of course you know his artwork is just really really nice i mean uh, you know, and, and once again, there's, I mean, there is action, everything, there's definitely a lot going on. It's just, you know, kind of different in visually, you know, it, it's like, obviously when you have the giant, you know, giant kaijus fighting the ultra megas, you know, you have that, that scope of the, you know, bat, giant battles, but now we're down, you know, on street level and, and, you know, that is kind of hard to make interesting, visually but yet heron really does a good job on that and and you can just see like you know because there's a lot more subtlety to to the characters in the second issue so um you know i like i said i i like the first issue but i really really like the second issue uh next up we have Catwoman, uh number uh 30 uh written by ram v uh with artwork by fernando uh blanco um, I did like the first issue and, and, uh, uh, Ram V has done a really nice job of continuing the story here. Um, you know, and it, it, it's kind of like a similar, uh, thing that a number of writers have done with, uh, Selena over the, you know, the past few years where, you know, it's kind of not really a superhero book. It's more of a, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, uh, espionage, you know, kind of thief, uh, type story and that that's kind of the angle that he's he's using here and um you know i it, it's good you know it's it's good solid i wouldn't say that i was necessarily blown away by this but i did in, enjoy the story i really like blanco's uh artwork um it has like kind of a gritty feel that that really works but um also 
it, you know, like like when you know she gets dressed up for the, for for the party uh, uh, towards the end of this issue, you know, it's not that the art style is different, but you know, he's able to like you know really bring that you know kind of like gorgeous you know movie star thing, you know, yet yeah, but when you're out in like kind of the you know dilapidated buildings, you feel that. So so that's what you know. It, it really you know he's really a good artist because he's able to like you know do the art. It's still the same style, but make sure you know it has that feel for the particular scene and that's actually a really you know that that's that's a good thing um like i said it's good is it great no but i'm enjoying it so you know we'll give it a few more issues and, and see where you know maybe you know hang with this first storyline to to kind of see uh next up we have stray dogs number three written by tony fleece with artwork by trish uh forstner um this is really interesting. I mean, obviously, yes, you know, there, there's definitely the comparison in some respects to Beast of Burden, but uh, this is more, you know, kind of centered, you know, where the dogs are just normal, but they've discovered that the, the, the current owner of the dogs has actually killed the previous owners and the dogs have, you know, discovered like, you know, the one, the newest dog has discovered what's, you know, like, Hey, I remember my master, this guy's weird. So they're starting, you know, they're starting, you know, basically it's a, you know, it's murder mystery with a dog with dogs. And, you know, but I mean, you know who the murderer is, but the interesting thing is, you know, they're trying to like figure out what's going on, but they're also, you know, not trying either trying not to tip off, you know, the killer. So, that's what's interesting. Um, you know, Fleece is, you know, he, he's obviously known for My Little Pony, but, you know, he's really, really gotten a good story here. I think what's, you know, I mean, obviously there's kind of the horror angle, but, you know, the way he's, you know, developed all the, you know, the characters of the dog and, and kind of the mystery, you know, it, it's kind of a neat twist on, you know, kind of a simple, simple murder mystery, you know, theme. Um, Forstner, you know, she does a really good job, you know, because she, she, you know, the, 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 the dogs have a bit of a cartoony look, but that, you know, it's kind of almost like it's animated. And I think that actually works really well in, in the sense of it, it's not, it's, it's gritty in the story, but not necessarily gritty with the artwork, which I think is actually, you know, a really smart move on, uh, Forstner's, uh, part, uh, because I think it gives it a good balance, you know, where it's, it's kind of like, um, you would think it'd be dark and gritty and, and, you know, that works well, say for Beast of Burden, but I think the, uh, her art style really, really works well here. Uh, next up we have Justice League number 60 with the, uh, main story, uh, written by, uh, Brian Michael Bendis with artwork by David Marquez. And there's a Justice League dark backup excuse me, uh, written by Ram V, uh, with artwork by, uh, Zermanico. Um, you know, I, I, Brian Bendis, you know, like he, he can kind of run hot and cold for me. Um, I, you know, I was not a fan of his Legion, his Superman run, just, I think the part of the problem with that, it just kind of went too long. Um, you know, I kind of like what he's doing here, but it just, it's, it's kind of like not moving, as quickly as I would like. Um, you know, and, and, you know, one, one of the things where he sometimes struggles is where they, you know, people kind of stand around and talk and it, the first issue actually didn't have that too bad. This issue, they kind of stand around and talk, which is not necessarily bad, but there's a point where I'm not saying I need to see, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, battles and stuff like that, but it does seem like, okay, that's nice. But, you know, I don't know that we need five pages of it. You know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it, it kind of comes off OK. Um, Marquez's artwork is actually really nice. He, you know, he does a nice job of, of, of drawing the book. I mean, it's it's solid artwork, um, you know, but but overall, it's it's not really blown out a lot of air, air up my skirt. Uh, you know, it's OK. Uh, the, uh, the, the admittedly, you know, the, the, the Justice League Dark, uh, Ram v, you know, like the first issue was kind of, you know, the first, first story was kind of okay. I have to admit the, the second one kind of, you know, did a good job of building on that first story, uh, and, and, you know, getting it going. Um, you know, and, uh, Zer Zermanico, 
uh, does a really nice job with the artwork. It has, has a really nice look. But I think the ultimate problem is, you know, I actually enjoyed it a bit more than the Justice League story. And yet, you know, it should be a nice compliment. You know, you should enjoy it, but you should also enjoy the main story. So I don't know that that's a, a big plus for the book. The fact that, you know, I think the backup's a bit better than the main story. So that's kind of where it's ended up. Uh, next up, we have Orcs number three, uh, written and drawn by Christine Larson. Uh, sadly, there's no squirrels in this. Uh, so, Christine, I'm really disappointed. No, I'm just I'm just teasing because I, I, I just loved how she did the squirrels in the first and second issue. But um, this issue, uh, you know, they've discovered, you know, they've discovered the gold. Uh, but then, uh, they, they get captured by trolls and, you know, tr you know, and trolls are just, you know, big, dumb, uh, uh, but they've never encountered orcs. So it's, you know, I, I think what has really made this book charming is, is the way that Larson is able to capture the humor of the, all this. I mean, you know, because in a lot of ways, you know, I mean, let's be honest, you know, you have like things like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, 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 you know, she's obviously taking a lot of those elements, but she's having fun with it. And that's what makes this book so enjoyable is that it, 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 it doesn't entirely take itself seriously, but that's its charm in that it's it's just having fun and that's a big plus you know and she really is able to capture all that you know like both the serious and the you know the goofy stuff and and when she does the artwork it just all you know like it shouldn't work but it is and i you know it's just it's this book is just a blast i mean it's just wild you know and, and, you know, obviously she's having fun with it and it really translates to the reader that she's having fun. So, so I, I'm still really enjoying it. It's a fun book and it's a great, and once again, another really good all ages book. Uh, next up we have Superman Red and Blue number two, uh, with stories, uh, um, Okay, so this issue has a uh, story by Steven uh, T. C uh, Siegel uh, with artwork by uh, Duncan Raul. Uh, then we have uh, Chuck Brown uh, writing and Dennis Colwin on the artwork. Uh, then we have uh, Dan uh, Pazian uh, writing and drawing. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Stephanie Phillips writing and Marley Zircone uh, with the artwork. And finally, we have um, Jason Howard uh, writing and uh, drawing his story. Um, you know, these are fun. These are anthologies. You know, once again, it's it's like, you know, uh, Batman black and white. So they're, they're short stories. And in this case, um, it's they use uh, red, blue, and also, you know, black and white, because that, that kind of comes with it. So they're they're limited, you know, has a limited color palette. Uh so you know, the 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 first one, um, you know, uh is Steven Siegel's uh, his story is really, really good. It, it it basically has to do with uh Martha Kent, you know, uh, you know, people talking about her son and you know, and it's just, you know, it's it's really interesting how she like, you know, she's talking about Clark but yet she's also talking about Superman and yet you know she she's like you know he's my son it doesn't make any difference you know if if he's adopted he's still my son and you know that's that's what's important uh the second story uh the the de <clears throat> excuse me the Dennis Colwin is actually quite interesting and I I really don't want to say much about it because you know basically the crux of the story is um you know, would, would kind of be giving it away. So I don't really want to say too much about that, but I just say, I did like that one. Um, the, um, the, the, the Dan, uh, 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 actually it was really interesting because it has, uh, it's a story about the cyborg Superman, uh, from, uh, you know, the, the death of Superman storyline. That was really interesting. Uh, I, I think the, the, one of the wildest ones, uh, was the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that, you know, it's, uh, is the, uh, um, uh, uh, Stephanie Phillips and, uh, Marley Zarcon, which is about a girl who meets Superman. She, she goes to show and tell, to tell this story and, you know, the kids don't believe her and, you know, you kind of know where it's going, but it's, it's really, 
it's probably the most charming story uh, that I've, you know, charming Superman story I've read in quite a while. Um, the final one by uh, Jason Howard of Big Girls fame is really just a blast. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun and visually it's just it's just amazing. Um, all of these, you know, both the story and the art are really good. Now, you know, once again, there's going to be some that are going to be a little bit better than others, but the really big key is are they all enjoyable? And yes, in the second issue, they all are all really enjoyable and they also kind of don't follow you know necessarily like you know the generic you know kind of superman story and and that that is actually you know really nice about these short stories that you know they kind of get to do whatever they want and that's that's what makes it charming i like short stories and you know if if you like short stories and you're a superman fan the you know it's well worth checking out uh next up we have specter inspectors number three uh written by bowen mccurdy and caitlin uh musto with artwork by uh bowen mccurdy um so you know once again this is like you know ghost chasers you know scooby-doo kind of smashed together uh so now we've gotten to the point where you know they've you know the the uh they uh, the one girl has been possessed they're trying to figure out you know to to help her you know um but also kind of solve the mystery of the town so they're in um they're in one this house that is basically haunted and you know they're finding clues of where to go and find things but they get split up and then the house is kind of playing tricks on them uh, so you have two two of the team that are just trying to like you know get back to the other two and the other the other two the 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 possessed uh, girl are they're trying to figure out okay how what you know there are clues within this house you're seeing the house in one perspective I'm seeing the house in one the other perspective like when they go in the library it's like one of them will see the books one way the other one will see them the other way and they're trying to figure out you know there's clues there but you know they they have to you know kind of figure out which way to go um you know, this has really been a really nice, surprising little book. And I think what really makes it interesting is that it's, it's not, it's not trying to be too dark or too, too scary. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, kind of, but, but then on the other hand, it, it definitely, you know, it is dark. It's just not, it's like, you know, a darker Scooby-Doo, like it's not, you know, just entirely on the surface, but, but it's, it definitely has a good mystery to it. And I, I think that's, what's really interesting. And I really enjoy, uh, McCurdy's artwork. I, you know, it just, it has a really nice style, um, and really complements the story. And, you know, it, it's, it's, they're, you know, they're, they're doing a really good job good job of like developing the characters and developing the stories at the same time. It just has a really good flow to it. it it's just been really a, a really, you know, once again, kind of an all ages book, a little older, but you know, still really good. Uh, finally, this week we have Ha Ha Number Four, uh, written by W. Maxwell Print and Prince, and this uh, the artist for this issue is uh, Patrick uh, Horvath. Um, this is you know, it's these are one and done stories, and they're all uh, you know basically based. Uh, you know, with with clowns in the story, clowns are the, the the story. And what it is is this: uh, this boy is having a birthday, and his dad uh, is supposed to go there as a clown, but you know he it weirdly gets trapped in this balloon. Uh, you know, like it's almost like he's stuck in the twilight zone. So the mom and the son go to her father's house, and the balloon follows her. So there's the story of them going there for his birthday party with at, at the grandfather's and yet his dad is trapped in this balloon trying to get out and it's just this it's really wild i mean you know that's what's interesting you know with with this book is you know each issue's different so you know it's it's really just you know in a lot of ways this issue is kind of like a weird stream of consciousness but not so weird like i mean it, the story makes perfect sense but it's just you have this like normal you know kid having a birthday and then you have this like you know guy that's trapped in a red balloon trying to get the hell out and everything in there is just like the you know the freaking twilight zone uh it, it's just wild and and i i'm really liking that the fact that every issue is different and once again you can just read this issue on its own it has 
no, you know, you don't have to read the first three issues. It just stands on its own. And, you know, it's basically an anthology book, but a monthly anthology. You know, it's like it's like Twilight Zone. Every episode's different. And, you know, that's that's you know, it's 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 nice. I mean, because you can, you know, as long as it has clowns in it, you know, that's its thing. But otherwise, the stories you can do whatever you you know, he can do whatever he's want. Um, I really like uh, Horvath's uh, artwork in this, you know, because, you know, he has, you know, it's hard because you have to kind of draw the normal world, you know, with the mom and the in the in the boy. And yet you have this like just lsd infused like clown trapped in a balloon you know with just all this weird crap and it, you know it just it really looks good i mean you know and and you know it just you know it has it's a really solid story with really nice artwork um it, it's really really good um so that's going to do it for this week. Hopefully next week we'll have a better studio situation. Uh, I'm trying to figure out kind of where where to film it, you know. So, uh, you know, at least I put some stuff up in the back. I got busted last time when I just had the blank wall. So I tried to add a little something. Uh, once again, the public service announcement of uh, getting my uh, books. I get them at uh, Pulp Fiction uh, Comics, Long Beach, California. Uh, Ryan uh, runs a great store there with Annie. Um, you know, really good pull service, uh, really take care of their customers. Uh, uh, check it out, you know, check out their website. Um, uh, uh, check out, uh, their Facebook page, Facebook group page. Uh, there's a lot of fun going on over there. Uh, there is a sister store in Culver City, um, a Pulp Fiction, Culver City, uh, run by Chris and her team. Once again, a really good store. Um, uh, so, you know, once again, those are two great stores in LA that, uh, obviously I highly recommend a uh, good store, good staff. Uh, that's always a plus They're there to help you out. Um, once again, uh, you know, uh, if you can get vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Let's, let's really try to get through this. We're, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We all got to work together. Uh, it, you know, so, uh, continue, uh, to social distance and wear your mask. Even if you're vaccinated, I've been vaccinated, still wear my mask all the time, all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, uh, you know, we had, we had better, uh, 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 more, uh, better news this week. Not, not so, uh, sad news. Uh, but, uh, once again, please be kind to each other. Uh, kindness doesn't cost anything. Uh, be, be kind to each other. Um, and, and just stay safe. So, uh, uh we're going to wrap it up. Uh, it's kind of a, thankfully a bit of a shorter, uh, show this week. Uh, also you might want to check out, uh, uh, the video for the two, uh, DC hardcovers that came out last week is up on, uh, YouTube. So you can check that out. I'll be putting it on the website, uh, soon too. Uh, so, uh, check it out, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you again next week. All right. Take care. Bye.